there, welcome back to Casual Kitchen Chats with Kate, episode three, where I sit in my kitchen and I have a chat with you lovely people. In today's episode, I'm gonna be sharing my Sim Kevy journey so far. So as a lot of you will know, I had a lot of apprehensions, a lot of mixed feelings about starting this drug, but I went through all of that in my How I Feel About Sim Kevy video, which I will leave linked up here and in the description bar below. But today I'm gonna to be sharing the last three months with you and my thoughts and feelings, how I feel about it now, all of that lovely stuff. I'm gonna dot some vlogs in that I took over the first few weeks just so you get an idea of how it was for me at the very beginning that's when it all started really 10th of February 2020 take it away so I'm about to take my first dose of Sim Kevy before I take the first dose I'm just gonna check my lung function my sats and my temp on the project breathe app this is just so we have a baseline basically <laughs> 69%, 98% sats, temperature, 36.6, 57.1 was my weight. So you take your Sim Kevy in the morning and then your Kaleidico in the evening. Peanut butter and banana on toast. Monday, let's get this show on the road. Here we go. I'm kidding. I don't know what that was <laughs> Day two. I haven't really noticed anything at the moment. Day three of Sim Kevy. Yesterday, the only thing that really happened was these really sharp, painful headaches that I kept getting throughout the day. Um, I've heard that's quite normal with Sim Kevy. I haven't noticed any change. The only thing I have noticed is that I can breathe in a little bit more without going into a coughing fit. Like, Oh no, <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> that was a really bad example, wasn't it? Scrap that. Day four on Sim Kevy. The headaches had kind of gone. They weren't as prominent. Day three, I could definitely breathe in a lot deeper, but I still cough a lot when I do. <laughs> so we'll see what day four brings. But yeah, I woke up this morning and my head was absolutely pounding, like I'd been drinking the whole night. Obviously I haven't been drinking, but I'm drinking more water now. Day five of Sim Kevy. Doesn't feel like much has changed, but I also haven't experienced massive side effects apart from the headaches that I had on, on on day two. And that's great. I'm really happy that I don't because I was really anxious about that. But at the same time, all of a sudden I just feel really guilty for not for not having experiencing these side effects because I know a lot of people who have just kind of dealing with the guilt. I'm also happy that I don't have side effects, but at the same time, not much has really changed. Okay, day six on Sim Kevy. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. It wasn't too great yesterday in terms of I only had two dog walks and I felt like I had walked about 10 miles because my legs were so achy and my whole body was really achy yesterday. But I only had two half an hour walks so today I don't feel flushed with energy. I just, just feel really tired. We have completed seven days of Sim Kevy now. The main difference I have noticed is that I can breathe in a little bit more deeply. Sometimes I can do it without coughing but sometimes I go into a coughing fit, so it's really dependent. I just wanna say that I feel incredibly lucky to not have experienced any huge side effects. I say that now, it'll probably happen tomorrow, won't it? But you know, I'm, I just wanna say I'm really grateful and I never take this for granted. People have been telling me that they're getting like hunger pangs, like, you know, when you're on steroids, you're so hungry, you eat absolutely everything. Um, I have not had that at all. I still feel achy, I still get sinus, pains and joint pains and all the pains but you know it's only been a week sometimes these things could take time i don't know the other thing that i have really noticed is how sensitive i am like emotionally sensitive let me tell you about a little story real quick yesterday i was watching the film the terminal with Tom Hanks, you know, in the airport. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it. My friend was like, oh yeah, it's a rom-com. And we started watching it. And there's a bit where the uh, cleaner puts his meal vouchers in the bin and I am just sobbing. I am sobbing at that. He's put the meal vouchers in the bin where you can't eat. And I like turned to my friend and I was like, you said this was a rom-com. This is such a sad film. And my friend was like, um, it will get better, don't worry, Kate. And there's been like, it's so unfair. So, yeah, I've noticed that I've definitely become a lot more emotional. Anyway, enough of me jabbering on. Let's do the lung function for day seven. <sighs> that is a 72%. That's the first time we've hit 72% for a while. The beginning of January was the last time I hit 72%. I just want to do another one. See what happens, really. <sighs> 
and it's gone down. <laughs> all right, I hope you're all doing well and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. I have now finished two weeks on Sim Kevy. This week was pretty much the same as last week. On Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I woke up and I didn't feel the fatigue that I normally feel when I wake up. I normally wake up and I'm like, oh my God, did I even sleep? <laughs> I don't know whether it's just it was just a really good night's sleep, but I also noticed that I had more energy on those days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today, Sunday, have not been like that. I think that's just purely because of poor sleep. I haven't really been sleeping well for the last couple of days. I'm excited to see how this week is gonna go because on Thursday, I have an annual review. So obviously I'm gonna be able to do my lung function in clinic, but I'm gonna do my lung function on my own machine now. <laughs> Day 14 on Sim Kevy, we have dropped to 68%. It's still a really good lung function and I know I've said this before, but I'm incredibly grateful for where my lung function is and has stayed for the last couple of years. Usually between the 60s, 70s, that's amazing. I'm so happy about that. Oh, let's move on to Thursday. <sighs> So annual review then. My lung function actually went down at my annual review um, from my previous clinic. Only a couple of percent is fine that it went down. Obviously I'm not mad about it at all um, because it's still stable. We have now finished week three. I'll be honest, this week I've been starting to feel a bit tight chested. I've been struggling to breathe all the way in. Energy levels have been down. Sorry, I can't be really what I'm now. Let's just do lung function for week three of some Kevy. Let's try that again. <clears throat> oh, for flipping neck. What am I doing wrong? I've all butter fingers today. <gasps> oh, well, that's a nice surprise. It's gone up to 72%. The lung function is staying pretty stable. And that concludes week three. So after that clip, I didn't really film anything else because of personal losses and I couldn't really judge how I felt because I've been through loss. <laughs> so I didn't do any after that. This is your next point of call, so lucky you. Eh? So there was a time in March where my throat got really scratchy and I was struggling to clear my throat a lot to the point where I started to taste blood because I was kept clearing my throat and obviously I'd irritated it. And then that led to me feeling quite run down and my glands had swollen and stuff. I have definitely noticed that since, even now. You know, we've been filming for a, a few minutes now and I've been trying to clear my throat already. So that's something new <laughs> and annoying. <clears throat> clearing my throat a lot more. My mate will probably tell me, oh, you need to have your electrolytes, Kate. Now, I don't know for certain if that is Simkevi or whether that's just something else. <laughs> that's the issue with this whole Simkevi thing is that if I ever start to feel something, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm like, is this Simkevi or is this just something completely random? You can't pinpoint it. Ugh, fly. I haven't posted anything on social media saying, you know, oh, I'm starting some Kevy today. No disrespect to anyone who has, that's absolutely fine. For me personally, like I said in my last video, I don't think it's fair for the people who can't take these drugs to have that pop up on their feed. That's just my personal view on it. At least with a YouTube video, because I know you're probably thinking, well, you're making a whole video of it, Kate, so how is that any fair? At least with a YouTube video, um, people can choose to click on it was my way of thinking. <laughs> does that make sense? I think it does. But no disrespect to anyone who's like, yay, it's all Kevy, because you have every right to be excited about starting this drug. I hope that makes sense, and I hope it didn't offend anyone when I said that. So the response I got from my last video was completely overwhelming. I was not expecting that at all. A lot of people with CF um, agreed and understood that the, the emotions and the reasoning that I was going through. And I had a lot of people tell me about their experiences with some Kevy so far. A lot of people, a lot of people telling me about their side effects. It varied, it varied. Some people's side effects were really bad. They were vomiting, they were throwing up every single day of the week, they lost loads of weight. Some people got really ill and felt really cold and fluy and quite run down. Then you had people who got really bad headaches. And then you had the other side of the, the scale where no one really got any side effects. I spoke to a couple of people who were on Trikafta and they hadn't experienced this massive jump that everyone else was talking about. It just highlights everyone with CF is different. So my experiences might not be the same as yours because <laughs> that leads me on to my next point. <laughs> oh, we're, we're making sense today, are we, Kate? Wow. I would love to sit here and tell you that some Kevy has made a massive difference and it's been life-changing, but 
I honestly, I can't sit here and, and say that, so let me explain. Now, I don't wanna sound ungrateful here because I am so grateful for this drug. Let's make that clear. And a part of me wondered whether, because I am in genuinely good health, I have a good lung function, um, I wondered if it wouldn't make such a big difference to me compared to someone else who has a lower lung function, they might see a bit more of a jump or a bit more of an improvement in their health. Um, and, and a part of me has wondered that for a while, but I've spoken to people who have similar lung functions to me and higher who have experienced big differences and big changes in their life since starting Simkevi. So there's not a rhyme or reason to it. There's no straightforward pattern that, that this makes sense to other than that everyone is so different with their CF. Has it helped you, Kate? Has it benefited you? three months down the line. Well, let me tell you a thing or two. So some of the benefits that I have felt from it is some days I can breathe in a little bit more deeply. Not a lot deeply, but I can breathe in a little bit more deeply. And then other days, absolutely not. There's, there's not consistency with this. It's just all over the place. Pretty much like my brain. It's kind of matching really and at the moment. <laughs> I started to notice about a month and a half in at the end of March was the reduction in sinus pain, which is fabulous. It doesn't seem to be consistent. It's just some days is good, some days it's not. I'm guessing it's got something to do with the weather and pollen and that sort of thing. Again, it's hard to know what's Simkevi and what's not. So another thing that I noticed was when I used to wake up in the mornings before Simkevi, I would be tight chested. I'd go straight into a coughing fit. I'd need a couple of puffs of inhaler. Um, and now that is definitely reduced. Don't get me wrong. There are still some days I wake up and I need my, my inhaler to, to get me through the first few minutes of being awake. Um, but then there are some days where it's, I don't need an inhaler at all. So again, it's like some days are good, some days are not. What is going on? Who knows? I still go into a coughing fit when I laugh, um, but I feel like that's been reduced a little bit. So, but I mean, do you even have CF if you don't cough after you laugh? That's the question really, isn't it? Lung function is pretty much stable and I'll go through a couple of numbers. Shall we do that now? Let's do that now. Let's find my Project Breathe app. Before Simkevi, you know, we're averaging on about 69, 72. This is in November. And then we started on February the 10th on 69%. And that pretty much stayed stable, 71, 72. I mean, looking at these numbers, it's pretty much the same. Something that I have noticed is that if I get about five or six hours sleep, um, I can actually go through the day now, whereas before I would have been pretty knackered. But I don't know whether that's because before I had a job and I was working, and now I'm just obviously shielding at home. So I don't know whether that's anything to mention. It's hard to analyze this properly and fairly. Well, let's move on to the other side. I haven't gained weight. A lot of people with Simkevi have said that they have gained a lot of weight and they're gaining weight like no flipping tomorrow, like they're eating carbs every few minutes. That's not happened to me. I've actually lost a little bit of weight. Should we have a look at my uh, Project Breathe thing? I started off at 57.1 and that has, you know, gone down to 55, 54, and we're at 55 at the moment. I'm not complaining because I didn't really want to gain weight because I'm quite happy with my weight. As long as it doesn't go down any further, I think we will be okay. Again, it's hard to tell, isn't it, with being in quarantine, whether it's that having an effect or whether it's the Sim Kevy or whether it's neither, something else, you know. Who knows? <laughs> I've heard some people saying that they need to reduce their Creon now they're on Sim Kevy. Um, it's pretty much stayed the same for me. I did try reducing the Creon. It didn't go well. It didn't go well, let's just let's just leave it at that, shall we? <laughs> I've heard a couple of people say that they've had some dodgy experiences with alcohol and some kevy, and same. The first time I drank when I had some kevy, I had about three Desperados, and what, they're like 4% alcohol or something? That night when I went to bed, I, I felt very, very drunk, like the world was spinning, like I had been doing shots of tequila, which I hadn't. I remember I woke up about 2 a.m. and just feeling like everything spinning and my heart was beating so fast. And I remember just thinking, this has got to be some Kevy because after three Desperados, that would never happen normally for me. So I don't know what that's about. And I, I have noticed since then that when I have alcohol in the evenings and I have my Kaleidico, I do feel sick afterwards and it's not a nice feeling and then I just have to stop drinking and it's, 
yeah, it's like, oh, oh, oh. So that's fun. My cough hasn't been reduced. My cough has been pretty much the same as anything. This is a really boring video, isn't it? Because I'm like, nothing's really changed. A lot of people experience the purge or coughing up a load of stuff when they first started. I didn't. Some people experience it better than others, is what I've figured out. It's so hard not to compare your experiences to other people and I do get a little bit jealous of other people when they say they've had these big differences but then I have to completely shake myself and be like, no Kate, at least you got the opportunity to try it. Let's be grateful for what it's done. I'm so grateful that it, it could have gone the other way. It could have been really bad and I could have been experiencing some really bad, horrible side effects but I haven't. I've been I think I feel I feel like I've got off lightly with this wholesome Kevy thing. I literally just plonked in the middle and I <sighs> great video. I just have to shake myself and remember that I am very lucky to be able to try this drug when there are people out there, like I have said before, who can't try this drug simply because they don't have the right genes. Some people have had a transplant and they can't take these drugs and that's really heartbreaking can't take trichafta or anything like that it might not have worked amazing wonders for me but at least i got the opportunity to try it and i never take that for granted i kind of wanted to make this video to show people that this drug affects everyone so differently because you hear so many success stories in the media and in the social media land of Twitter and stuff um, where people are only sharing success stories and that's great for the people who have had those successes, not disrespecting that at all because that is amazing. However, no one wants to hear of the other side of it. No one wants to hear that it wasn't a success and I think feel like that needs to be changed and it's almost a shame that we've wired our brains to only pick up and celebrate success stories when really we should be celebrating whatever happens because even if we tried and it didn't work we tried and that is a success in itself am i making sense i don't know if i am i feel like i've gone off on a ted talk here Bear with me, hang on. Because we can't control how our body is gonna react, can we? We can't control the horrible side effects and, and how it's gonna change our life. Otherwise, everyone would be, you know, off their face on some Kevy, wouldn't they? If you could control it. <laughs> but you can't. It shouldn't be made to feel like a failure because your body didn't absorb it well or it didn't react with it well. And I can imagine the people who haven't got on with some Kevy might feel deflated and sad and angry and maybe a little bit of an outcast as well and this is the issue we shouldn't just highlight the successes in the media or in social media and although that is great that is amazing it doesn't give the entire picture it gives a very one-sided story doesn't it about this wholesome Kevy and life-saving life-changing drugs scenario you should be looking at this from a wider perspective because if you just focus on one part like I say you intend to miss the entire picture. Oh, this is going off on a little bit of a rant now. But another problem with only sharing the success stories is it's encouraging people who aren't feeling the successes to feel deflated and to not talk about it and that can lead to loneliness and that is one of the worst emotions to feel. And this is the issue here. No one wants to hear that Simkevi isn't working for you. The amount of times I have said this to people that have said that it's not exactly doing anything and they come back and they say, well, have you tried it with more fat? Have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried this? And I'm just like, I have. It's okay that my body hasn't reacted it reacted to Simkevi like yours has. That's okay because we all react differently. But people just need to accept the wider picture here. That's my perspective of it. So what I'm saying here is if no one wants to listen how it didn't work for you, I will listen. And I'm not trying to be modest here, but if anyone needs to chat about it or just rant about it, about it's not working or it is or whatever it is, just shoot me a message preferably on Instagram because I go on there more times than I should. But yeah, just drop me a message and I'll try and get back to you at some point. I'm still clearing my throat a lot. Um, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that. Like it's just like really something at the back of your throat and you keep having to clear it, it's really annoying. I'll probably be told to drink electrolytes from a shot glass or something when I... It kind of goes back to what I was saying in my last video in which I got a ton of messages from other people who agreed and who were very frustrated with the media campaign 
about calling it a life-saving, life-changing drug, which was, you know, kind of misleading. And it's a shame that it put that expectation and that pressure on a lot of other people as well. And it just goes to show that not one size fits all. Some people have had to come off Simkevi because of the side effects. It doesn't actually say anywhere, but a lot of people are saying that you need to have 10 grams of fat with your Simkevi and if you use Kaleidico for it to work. If you are experiencing side effects, some people say to up the grams of fat to 20 or something, might work. If you're getting really bad headaches, like a lot of people were, I've heard that you need to drink electrolytes. A few things I've heard through the grapevine. Can anyone tell me what you have in the mornings with your Simkevi and in the evenings? Because I don't know. What do people have? So overall, nothing's really changed. <laughs> to cut a very long video short, it's pretty much the same in it. I don't want to sound ungrateful, because I am very grateful. Don't know if I've mentioned that at all in this video. So that concludes Casual Kitchen Chats with Kate episode three. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you've made it to the end. It's been a bit of a long video in it. <clears throat> there we go. Some Kevy life. Hashtag. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below if you have any thoughts or experiences with some Kevy and what do you have to eat with it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you wanna and I will see you in the next one. What is this? Why am I still going? I wonder if some Kevy has addled my brains. No, it's just the same and it's just nothing, nothing different. <laughs>